All right, everybody. Thank you for coming to the first faculty lecture series of the spring semester of 2018. Uh, it's very important that you understand that I am Dr. Benson. I have nothing to do with organization of this thing. Dr. Armstrong is the one who gets all the credit for organizing this series. So thank you. Uh, today I get to introduce the Geo Club and what they're going to talk about today is their self-funded trip to the Geological Society of America conference in Seattle last year. So without further ado, there you go. Thank you for coming today. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. My name's Ashley. Uh, we have Joe, Terry, and Kathy here. We're all going to be taking turns talking about uh, a conference that we went to last October. Uh, it's the Geological Society of America's conference. It uh, was in Seattle, Washington this last year. Um, and really what we like to do is, um, many of you might have seen this on our flyer about how GeoClub never dies, it just recrystallizes. Um, I'm pretty sure you cannot get a geology degree without having said at least six puns per day. Um, <laughs> so uh, basically, we wanted to talk about our experience at this conference, and we also want to, um, you know, encourage people, other students and faculty, and uh, not really convince, because I think a lot of you know how important these conferences are, but just to sort of give you an idea of why we go to these conferences and what we learn from them. Um, so the Geological Society of America is a professional society uh, based in America, obviously. Uh, it has over 25,000 members in it, and it's from about uh, 115 different countries, I believe. Um, and so these are just the numbers up here from this last conference. So as you can see, there's, there's quite a big attendance for these conferences. So you get about just over 7,000 in total. Um, 2,800 of those were professionals, and then 2,600 of them were students. Uh, so you get quite a good mix. And then you have other categories, like they have K through 12 teachers who teach geology, or some of the earth sciences come, come to the meetings as well. Um, you get members of the media, so there were quite a few there. Uh, 54 countries were represented at this past Geological Society of America conference. Uh, it changes from year to year but you usually get a wide selection of countries that come and present and uh, you get to chat to a bunch of people. Um, over 393 sessions uh, were presented, which is a huge number in just a short amount of time. So the conference was for four days, I believe. And so uh, that's a lot of conferences and lectures to try to get into. Um, and then abstracts accepted are over uh, 4,900, um, so there's just massive amounts of abstracts, and that includes things such as the lectures that we went to, but also poster presentations, which we're going to get into because a couple of us actually did some poster presentations. Um, so some of the organizations represented at GSA, uh, you get a lot of uh, geological organizations, the so USGS, AGU. Um, you also get a lot of the national parks, the BLM. Um, GeoCore, which is an internship program for geo majors, and of course NASA, um, which seems to be the most popular table ever. <laughs> um, but basically, you get interaction with these companies. It's not just showing up and picking up cool stuff from their tables. You actually get to talk to a lot of the individuals there. Um, and so we're going to get more into that. but. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. And the whole reason why we do this is because we want to give students the chance to sort of have the opportunity to see what the geo career offer, offers to them. So things like, you know, what sort of professional settings are you going to be working in? You know, the, the whole part about traveling, so just getting on a plane and going somewhere and being in a whole different environment, which you know, from a rural area, not everyone always gets to do that. So we're always pleased when we get to fund a student to go on to these trips and experience brand new things. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass this off to Kathy. <laughs> Sorry. So hi, I'm Kathy. Um, I'm going to try to make my presentation similar to how I viewed our trip. 
Our trip was very, um, I would classify it as very spontaneous and fun. Um, it was a massive information overload. By the time we left there, I don't think I could have stood to go into another session to save my life. Um, it was just so much information to even try to absorb in the amount of four days. So, um, <coughs> so as, you, as uh, Ashley's already talked about, we have several thousand people that attend these conferences yearly. Um, I actually did some volunteer work. Uh, I'll get into a little more of that later, but um, while talking to some of the people who actually run these programs, <coughs> um, they, I found out, which is something I didn't know, but GSA actually has uh, divisional so they actually have much smaller conferences um, in different divisions across the U.S. And they actually tend to be a little more useful for resume building. Um, they're a little better for networking if you're very specific on what area you want to go to. There's particular benefits that you get from the smaller divisions than you do from the massive, uh, the annual um, U.S. total conference. Um, so we went and went into sessions so each session could range from, I think they averaged a couple hours, but within each session you had small talks that were 15 minutes long. So you can actually go into a session, catch one talk, leave very quietly, and go to a different one. Um, I tended just to kind of stick with the planetary geology ones. There was just, uh, there was only a handful of planetary geology talks, so I got to listen to most of them, uh, which was really great. Um, so we did have a couple students, Ashley and Joe did go to a resume building seminar. It was, uh, it was extremely helpful in the fact that you could see, you know, look, this is, what, um, this is what employers and potential employers are gonna be looking for on your resume. The best way to make yourself sound better than the person next to you. Uh, things like that, things to make you stand out when you compare to other applicants. So the poster sessions, you could go in, they had a large uh, auditorium, it was, was huge, I don't even I think over 300 posters a day. At, at a time, yeah, and so what would you would do is you would go in and the posters would be put up at 8 a.m. and then you would have all day until 6.30 at night that the posters would be there. You did have a specific time that the, um, the person who made the poster would be at their poster. So if you actually wanted to stop and talk to somebody about whatever uh, study they had done, you had to make sure to get in there whenever that time frame was. You did have a couple people who, I guess they weren't interested in talks or maybe they uh, just really liked their poster, but they actually sat with their poster all day long when it was up, which was kind of funny, but you would figure that almost 12 hours, they would get a little bit bored with it. Um, and then engaging in lectures. so. I had a really awesome experience in the first planetary geology session I went to. Um, I listened to about three different <coughs> lectures. Uh, most of them were actually about Mercury, um, which was kind of interesting. I had always been under the impression that Mercury was kind of a, it was a dead planet and there wasn't really much there to see. Well, throughout these uh, lectures, you actually learn that Mercury has likely had recent volcanic activity within, you know, geologically recent time. Um, and in one of the talks, I could not wrap my head around this image this lady had put up. She was talking about these, um, the erosional uh, depressions on the ground. And to me, it just looked like a great big crevice. It didn't really look like anything specific. So I actually got up and I asked a question. And <laughs> it was very embarrassing because it probably took five minutes for this. Uh, she was a master. She was a master student. And it probably took five minutes for her to understand what I was asking. But I actually had people all around me going, oh yeah, I get that. And, and understanding what I was asking, and then you actually had somebody else stand up and re-ask my question to her um, to try to explain it to me. So that was very embarrassing. So I turned around, I didn't ask any more questions. But later on, I was actually stopped by somebody who I actually was quite fond of at the conference. And uh, I, I saw this lady several times. She's a graduate student in a planetary uh, geology program. She actually stopped me and said, hey, you're that girl that stood up in this session, and you asked that question, didn't you? And I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, that, that was me. <laughs> and she's like, that's great. Are you an undergraduate? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm actually looking to go and get my doctorate in planetary geology. It's a dream of mine. And she's like, that's so awesome. I really wish we had more undergraduates that would engage in these conferences. Because it's not just to go and hear them dump all of their research on you. It's, they're there for 
you to go and ask questions. They're there for people to basically challenge some of their ideas sometimes and try to, the way I understood it was basically try to snuff out who could be possible candidates for other programs or for jobs. Um, and I was stopped by two or three people after that. Um, so it was very interesting to see how me asking one silly question could turn around and have several people recognize me at the conference. <coughs> um, so these are a couple of the photos that we took. So they didn't actually allow recording while in the sessions. You weren't, it was, you weren't really allowed to take photos. They didn't, because a lot of this was published work, but it really wasn't something that they wanted to be put out there. They were projects that were still being worked on and things like that. We took photos <laughs> anyways, so. <laughs> that was my understanding when we started, is that it was a no-no to take photos. Um, okay, so I'm gonna pass off network networking to uh, my, my colleague Terry here. <laughs> Well, I'm going to cover a little bit about the networking at the <coughs> conferences. Um, you know, networking was pretty much unlimited, depending on what you were looking for. Like, obviously, the first one on our list is with the universities, and depending on what you specialize in and what you really want to get into, there was opportunities from University of Kentucky with car topography, getting into you know Central Washington, who does a little bit more volcanics and uh, geoengineering and stuff along those lines. Uh, during the expo, when you'd walk through the hall, there was just about any university that had a master's program related to geology that was there with School of Mines. Um, they were more than happy to talk to you, get your information, and you know, some of them it took a little bit to get back to you, but you know, everybody's busy with school, but then they respond in a pretty timely fashion to know what your interest is, and shoot, I think School of Mines has sent me a couple of different emails after just talking to them, and I thought that was really great that being able to kind of get a foot in the door and start talking to different graduate programs. Um, and then along with, you know, next I'd put organizations, and then big one is internship opportunities. And not only just being able to speak to different organizations, but also other students that have done internships. Um, you know, it gives them a big opportunity to be able to do more traveling and work within their field and further understand what, well, they're getting themselves into, really. <laughs> Um, but with the different organizations there, you know, trying to get in with like the USGS, the BLM, and the National Forest Service, whether you're just trying to do, you know, a short summer internship or if you're looking for a two-year internship to see if you really want to dive into that type of work or if you want to get more into the private sector. Um, the opportunities were all around there and available. Um, at the same time at the expo, uh, geological equipment vendors Everything from XEM and certain X-ray, um, uh, X-ray, what am I looking for? What? Diffraction. Yeah, uh, the different X-ray equipment to be able to recognize exactly what type of chemicals are in a certain mineral or in a certain object were there to Brunton, uh, which is a big mass producer of amazingly great uh, compasses to even Esling, who sells rock hammers and shovels and things along those lines. Um, and you could go up and try out their different equipment that they had or the products they had for sale, like Brunton had. Um, you know, they had set up a kind of a plywood fault line and you were able to use one of the compasses on there and see exactly what the slope of that fault line is, what direction it's facing. And then they had a raffle at the end for the person who came the closest to having it correct out of the students and gave them, I think, like a three or $400 compass for winning that. Obviously none of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, you know, along with the other vendors, mineral vendors, um, which a lot of them were just kind of like gemstone vendors, where it's like, you know, you kind of ruin that rock by cutting facets on it and everything else instead of it being a natural stone. Um, textbook vendors, and along with them, some of them, you know, all sorts of textbook vendors and <coughs> globe, like 3D globe vendors and everything else were there. Um, can't forget the raffles and surveys. Um, well, one we like to go to is a spinning wheel where they yeah, have so all sorts of stuff that they could give you away and we'd love to spend about every day and you know, sign up for a new email off of that. Um, interactive displays, I think you guys might have gotten a little bit more into the interactive displays than I did. Um, but it, pretty much in the expo halls they had anything you wanted to and just the networking opportunities from going to the different schools 
different organizations and just getting your names on mailing lists at an early time. So even if you're two, three years out from graduating, just having your name out there and people being able to start to recognize you, maybe if they don't at that time have an opportunity for you, somebody else might. Um, and the students, even networking with the different graduate level students and being able to get some contact information to fully understand the university they're going to, if that's something you might be interested in for a graduate program. You know, it just leads to a lot more opportunities. And then of course the social gatherings, which I think after uh, you hit, you know, 10 or 12 different sessions throughout the day, you're really looking forward to that social gathering and just kind of exhaling from all the information you've taken in, but being able to share what you've learned throughout the day with other people that have like interest, which I found that to be a really, really great at the end of the day to be able to do that. Um, we're gonna go on to, let's see here. And we're gonna discuss these two presented uh, Cassie and Ashley did a presentation while they were there, so they wanted to talk a little bit about that. Thank yeah, thanks, Terry. So, um, yeah, so like you said, Cassie and I were able to present our posters while we were at GSA. It was actually the very last day of the <laughs> conference, and at first, Cassie and I were really worried because we thought the last day everyone's going to be going home. Um, kind of good thing because then we don't have to, like, you know, try and talk it to many <laughs> people. <laughs> But actually it turned out that like a load of people were still around and we had so many people come up to us. I mean, uh, sometimes we did initiate the conversation with them. Other times people would just look at our posters and be like, oh, I've heard about this. Let me know what, what you guys did. Um, and it was really fascinating for me personally. Um, the guy I was right next to worked for USGS, which is a company or an agency which I'm really interested in working for. And so I got to rack his brain a little bit. Um, and so that was, that was fun to network with other people <coughs> presenting. But also, um, I would just have people come up to me and be like, suggesting things to me, things I had never heard of, um, things maybe like we don't quite have access to, but are kind of the up and coming technologies of of the field, so they would be like, oh, here, like, check this out, go Google it, or, you know, I'll give you the name of it and read the research on it. Uh, I also had people come up to me and give me references for people who worked for USGS or the National Park System who actually focused on the type of research that I was doing, so kind of a segue into here are some more networking uh, references for you. Um, I think... It was overall just a really good experience. It was the first time I ever presented a poster at a national conference. Um, so I, it, the learning curve was huge. I, I learned a lot. And so I'm hoping that will help take me into the next research project that I'm working on. Um, and then I can apply all the things I learned just from presenting here towards that. Uh, Cassie, do you want to add anything else? Um, yeah, so I, I think the most interesting interaction I had at my poster was I had a gentleman come up and he took just, just a couple moments and read the poster and then he started quizzing me. He's like, okay, so what are you going to tell your, your city to do? So what is your conclusion from your paper? How are you going to add it? And like, this is almost how he was. He was stepping forward each question and it was a little intimidating because it's undergraduate research. We had just done it to continue some research from a class we had started. <laughs> and so I was like, well, honestly, I wouldn't suggest it because it's, it's basically one semester of research. There's no way you can make any certain uh, changes on a citywide level with one semester of an undergraduate's <laughs> research. Um, <coughs> yeah, I think that's about it. It was, it was very cramped, very hot. It was very intimidating. There were people everywhere. Um, I'm not a huge fan of masses of people, so it was a little, <laughs> it was a little weird. It was a little bit nicer towards the end of the day when it was more of the social gathering and people were just sort of like, over the day, so they'd come up and they just <laughs> want to chat to you. So it yeah. wasn't so much the quizzing on your research, but the quizzing was nice. It makes you think sort of proactively about what, where am I going with this research? Yeah. Um, and it, you, you guys are more than welcome to come up. This is one of our posters that we took. Um, so I, I brought it in so you could see the mag magnitude of, of the giant pieces of paper we put behind us. <laughs> And the nice thing about our club, but also other clubs on here on campus, is that um, I think almost every semester we've gone, 
either to this conference or we go to another conference called AAG, which is the geography side of, of our club. Um, we've had someone, at least one or two people, present the poster. Um, so this is like amazing experience as far as getting into the field, um, doing the research. And uh, so <coughs> it's great that us as well as other clubs on campus can actually offer that to the mm -hmm. students. It's a great resume builder. People, um, I was told that employers or potential employers love to see your initiative to say, listen, this is my research and I wanted to present it, even if it wasn't a groundbreaking um, research project. Okay, sweet. Um, so I'm going to talk to you guys about the volunteering. This is my favorite photo I took. This was down in Pike's, Pike's Place. Yeah, so um, uh, my best friend back in Texas, her name is Kat, and she actually loves to wear really weird masks like this. She has a horse mask. Um, so I took this photo and I immediately sent it to her because it was almost like she was standing there in Washington with me. Um, so I did volunteering. Um, uh, so what volunteering does at these conferences is it pays your way. I did not have to pay a two to four hundred dollar um, fee, basically for my entrance fee. Um, if you were a student, you got it was about one hundred and fifty two hundred dollars, depending on when you bought your registration. And if you were overseas, it could run upwards of seven hundred dollars. Uh, I worked at the check-in booth on the last two days, so I actually wasn't hit with a tackle of people. I I got the I got the people who come in as stragglers and. It was kind of nice to sit down and talk to people as they were coming in and say, okay, why are you here? And, um, I tend to ask way too many questions. Um, so I did, I stopped and I said, oh yeah, so what do you do? You know, what, what brought you to this conference? And most people would humor me, but you had a couple people who were like, eh, eh, would grunt the answers and then walk away. <laughs> um, I worked, uh, so I did meet two of the people who organized the GSA conferences um, and I actually found out that most of the people who organize these conferences do not have a geology degree. They have a marketing or they have a business degree. They actually have very little interest in geology, um, although they did say that they go to a couple sessions when they're not working, but most of the time they work 24-7 while they're at the conferences. Um, I know that uh, the lady who basically runs it, I, I can't remember her name, um, but she had mentioned that she would start almost immediately after the end of this session and start building for the next session. Uh, they did already have the place picked out. They already had the conference hall that they were gonna take the next session to this year. So it's, this year GSA will be in Indiana, which is kind of like a, it's like a blah place. I've not been to Indiana, but that's how I've he heard it described. So it'll be interesting to see if the geology there is gonna attract as many people as it did in Washington. Um, so, and, and uh, you know, something that I, that I also found really interesting is that the people volunteering next to me could be doctorate students. They could be master students. And a lot of them were actually. I think all the people that I sat down and I drilled about, you know, what did you do? How did you get to where you're at? They were all in master's or doctorate programs. And I did talk to a guy who had, uh, he had been talking about that he took a year or two off and then he went back to his, his doctorate. And it's kind of interesting to get the perspective of students who are currently in those programs that I want to be in in the future and find out, okay, you know, did you actually go back to school? Because that's a huge problem that students will leave school and then they tend to never really go back to school. Um, and, and it was just really amazing to be able to interact with as many people as I did uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And I only spent, I think it was eight hours in total across the whole thing. That's all I, that's all I volunteered for for my registration. So it was a great snag. It was an awesome networking um, opportunity. I got the chance to meet various people. I got the chance to talk to a couple different media people, um, people who were professors at different universities. Um, and then I think one of the most embarrassing but one of the most awesome moments of my entire life was I, I was walking through the exhibit hall and I just happened to look up from whatever I was looking at and this guy was standing there and I immediately recognized him. He was I, Ian Stewart. Um, he does a BBC planet Earth or Earth series that is very heavily influenced by geology. He is a geologist. Well, you know, you see stuff on TV and you always think, oh yeah, he's a geologist. Well, I actually met him at a conference, so I, I, I walked up to him. And I felt like such an idiot because I said, oh my God, I watched you sniff oxygen out of a test tube. <laughs> <laughs> and he just kind of looked at me for a second. 
And he's like, yeah, yeah, I did that. And I'm like, <laughs> and, it, and it took me, and the, actually the colleague next to him I had seen do co a couple TV series on BBC as well. And I felt so terrible because I didn't recognize him. But Ian Stewart, I was a huge fan of him. He had, he's done some of my favorite uh, television geology things. And it was really awesome to meet him. It's not necessarily a networking uh, moment, but it was one of the most memorable moments from the trip. Right. You know, after going, we decided we really couldn't leave out the culture aspect of it. Um, you know, coming from the valley, we were going somewhere large where a lot more cultural diversity, not only amongst the people that are attending the conference, but just also in the city itself. Uh, being able to go to, well, in the background, it's the Pikes Place Public Market. Um, luckily, we got out there a day early, so we were able to spend the day kind of walking through downtown Seattle and made it to Pikes Place. And it's really busy, but really cool at the same time. Uh, first thing you see when you walk in is they've got all the fish stands set up and they're throwing you know, 20, 30 pound fish across the room to each other and hollering and you know, chopping <coughs> fish's heads off right in front of you. Uh, just, just a really good experience. And along with that, I mean, also getting into the market itself, all the Asian markets that are in there, the, um, different little shops and stores, from record stores to art galleries, um, coffee shops, a little bit of everything you can enjoy. I think all of us, one of our favorite places we were able to go to, which the uh, folks that we are, was a map store. And I, I think we spent well over an hour in there looking at maps. Found the apothecary store that we possessed. <laughs> Just saying. So, you have to talk about it. Yeah. Um, oh. But you know, just being able to adventure to different cities and different places and understanding different cultures and to just be amongst people that are different from what we're used to down here in the valley. Um, the valley is great, but diversity elsewhere is also wonderful. And it's great to be able to experience that and to take that in and walk away with a kind of a different you know, outlook on things. Um, you know, in variety of cuisine, I, I always laugh because one night we were going out to dinner and every place was really busy. Um, you know, conference, you've got 5,000 people all trained to eat in downtown Seattle. Well, we see, it was a sign that said fuck. You know, Vietnamese cuisine. Well, the first thing we do when we walk in is there's just stairs going down into the base. <laughs> you know, we're like, hmm, let me try this out. Well, uh, went down, ended up one of the best Vietnamese food experiences I've ever had. Like, just amazing. Um, I know we got kind of some weird looks because it was very traditional Vietnamese, and you know, we're sitting in there just laughing and having a good time. Um, but along with that, just the different types of cuisine. Um, you know, in, in cities, the valley is very limited on what we have. And going to Seattle, it was really nice to be able to get out and um, fill in with like the Vietnamese cuisine, the, all the different cultural cuisines that were out and about that could be tried. Um, along with the culture is building relationships. And that's not only with the students and also with professors and professionals. Um, you know, when you start to talk to the students, I found that to be one of the best because they're kind of on your same level, so you don't feel down here when you're talking to them, or like you don't know what you're talking about. So it's great to be able to build relationships with different students, maybe some master level students, and at the same time talking with professionals, where once again I spoke about networking, just that getting your name out there and having other people's names in your quote unquote Rolodex of uh, contacts that you do have. Um, and of course, along with that, obviously, it's the opportunity to travel. As you know, they've said, the next GSA is going to be in Indiana, but like um, the geologist um, conference is going to be in New Orleans this spring, which I think there's a few people planning on going. So just being able to utilize the opportunities that the school has gets you out to different places, and it may even end up in a city where you find out that that might be somewhere you want to move to after you're done with school or ready to move on to a graduate school. Um, and then also the type of professional, which goes along with where you're going. For a geologist, it's going to be a lot about your geographical location, about what you're going to want to specialize in. You know, Colorado, karst topography is probably not going to be one of your specialties. You know, we're not going to have a lot of limestone dropping out and creating holes. Um, but if you were into that Kentucky, so you're able to just, you know, talk to different people and understand what you want to really put your focus and emphasis on towards your degree, to be able to move on forward with your career path. Um, and international connections, I think other people maybe had this more than me, but 
you know, talking to a lot of students that had already done internships, we talked to one girl, she was, I think, graduating in December, but was able to spend the summer in Tanzania. Um, I don't remember exactly what her focus was there, but I was kind of beside myself, like, wow, you get to go spend an entire semester in Tanzania. You know, and just that opportunity to be able to meet people that have been around the world to get a little bit better idea on the geology and what their opportunities were to be able to travel and do their internships and just also with the opportunity with, you know, I met a couple of different professional geologists that were working, you know, a lot off of the coast of Washington, but a couple I sat through about an hour long, four sessions that were an hour long, um, that they were doing subduction zones off the coast of Alaska, which I found to be really cool. Like, oh yeah, you lived on a boat for six months and, you know, looked at everything happening within the subduction zone. And, you know, so, and that's not international, however. It's still just the fact of getting out of your bubble and being able to kind of meet people from around and open up some different opportunities. And, well, here's an idea of Seattle itself, of the locales of where everybody is from. Um, pretty much all over the world. Obviously, the United States takes up a, you know, a large majority of that, as you cannot tell the difference in the states. It looks like a swarm of bees. And then, you know, here's a little bit of just downtown Seattle, different places that we visited. You know, we did take that one day when we went to Pike's Market, and I believe this is REI Seattle on the left. Which yes. Got a good REI if you're near one, because we don't have one. Very close to here. It's very sunny, can't you tell? <laughs> yeah. yeah, the whole time we were there, we didn't get to see Rainier except for one morning for about 15 minutes. But we were lucky. Everybody was really surprised. They're like, you couldn't have had the conference on a better week because we only had rain the very first day after that. Um, it was cloudy, but there was no rain. Yeah, just kind of misty and dreary. Um, and of course, just a view of the bay. Um, I'm not sure That's what, is that from our condo? No, so the, uh, the photo on the, the right um, is of out of Pike's Place Market. Okay, that's um, and it looks down on the carnival. I've actually never been on a Ferris wheel, so. I found this uh, very interesting to see the ferry from this close up. <laughs> and then, of course, the picture on the right here, that's the fish market, um, which was like a and they were throwing fish everywhere. And it's in the like fish, obviously. <laughs> and then top left, um, on our walk to and from the conference every day, we had to go past the Google Biodome, I guess for lack of better words, that they just put up there. I think they're around $1.2 billion for those. Um, and then bottom left, this is Ashley's brother-in-law's brother picture of a spider from looking down from the Space Needle that's done on the roof of a building that's within the same park. So we thought we'd put that up. And the one on the right's from the same park where the Space Needle is, just some illuminated flowers that stood about 50, 60 feet tall that we walked past most evenings on the way back to the condo. Um, and of course the Space Needle. We, we all ended up, were able to make a day there, um, which was a lot of fun. And then, you know, we'll roll on to why conferences such as GSA and AAG are important. It's my turn. I know. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, saving the worst for last. I'm kidding. But um, so why these conferences are so important to us are kind of go like rehash back at what everyone else had already been talking about. but. I think one of the biggest things that was most important was just um, getting out of your comfort zone. Not a lot of people, especially around here, haven't really been a lot of places. And I think with the geosciences field, like Ashley had mentioned the other day, um, if you get in the right, I guess, the right job, sometimes you travel a lot. So that's like kind of a norm. And um, a big thing was definitely networking. Um, the reason, the main reason why I actually went to GSA was to talk to grad schools. I was hoping for University of Arkansas, but they weren't there. <laughs> but um, the best, I think the best part about all the colleges being there is instead of having to spend all the money to travel all over the, um, the country trying to, to go talk to professors or students at all these schools, you can just go to one conference and talk to at least 50 or more. So I talked to, I think I talked to at least 25 and got information from all of them. And, um, the cultural experiences are, of course, super important. And I figured I'd mention to this picture that I took, um, 
me and Jamie, another one of the girls that got to go, um, the year before at GSA 2016 in Denver, I randomly won this raffle for a free kayaking trip for two. And so me and Jamie got to go and we kayaked for four hours on Puget Sound and in the Ballard Locks for free. And it was the last one of the season. It was like really cool. Got to see a lot of cool wildlife, but it was definitely really awesome. And then that's the picture that I took of Mount Rainier from the airport the morning I left, because I left, I think, before all of you guys, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I left like a day before. And, um, John, do you think? Sorry, I'm really good at this. Um, I just want to say thank you to Dr. Armstrong and <coughs> Benson and um, ASNF and uh, Phil Schroeder for allowing us to be able to do all of this. Well, we indeed have time for questions. You can ask yes. now or ask uh, <laughs> on your way out. Make sure you check out the posters in the blink. No, I, I wish I had. I did talk to, uh, there's evidently a very 4020 division of planetary geology that uh, it was recommended that I definitely look into this and join because if you're going to be a planetary geologist, you have to be part of that, that uh, congregation. Did any of y'all get job arts Where are you going to grad school? Um, well, right now I, I have my, uh, I want to get my doctorate from Brown University. Uh, doc Dr. James W. Head runs the Planetary Geology Department, and he, uh, I've seen most of his articles focused on Venus and Mars, and they are by far my favorite planets. Um, other than Jupiter, I'll have to admit the gas giants are totally wicked. <laughs> other than Jupiter? Did I say that? No. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm looking at a couple of different schools at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, well, there were a couple at the conference that I talked to. Um, but some of the ones that I'm really interested in, unfortunately, weren't there. But you still get, you get a good sense of what they offer. It's, sometimes it's harder to see their programs online, and so if you're there to talk to them and ask them about the professors and, and everything, it makes a huge difference. Um, that, since I'm kind of undecided, I'm graduating in May, but I just plan to go home and try to find a job in the field first and kind of see where I want to go, but I may end up at University of Arkansas. Like for me, if I decide to go on or kind of teetering on the National Forest Service or continuing, it would be Central Washington or School of Mines. But School of Mines kind of on the back because I don't know if I'll, that's a tough one to get into. Yeah. But have got Central Washington on the forerunner. So. Cool. All right, well, thanks again. Well, thank you. Thank you.